Hey, Kyle here with kylesegraves.com. Today we're talking about what documents do you need to get your mortgage approved? All right, so you've probably heard maybe some horror stories or just a lot of different uh, problems that people run into when they're getting a mortgage and then they have to submit a lot of documents to a lender. Um, so we're gonna talk about what documents you can expect to turn in, uh, maybe some one-off documents that might be a little unique for your situation, and then how you can speed up the process to make it as easy as as possible because no one actually likes getting a mortgage right we want to go through that process as quickly as we can and this guide is going to help you do that in the best way possible so first of all why do lenders need documentation so this kind of brings us back to the housing crash so if we remember 2008 when we had all of these issues with mortgages and the housing bubble largely stemming from not enough documentation and predatory lending practices. So what was happening prior to 2008 is you could walk in as a buyer, you could just say what income you made and no one would actually check uh, thoroughly to see if that's what you made. And so what ended up happening is people were taking mortgages that they simply just couldn't pay back. And so they're facing foreclosure, modifications, having to sell. And even now I'm running into people who are still facing problems from predatory lending practices that were happening prior to 2008. So this is a big problem and obviously we don't want this to happen anymore. So that's why all this documentation requirements are in place is to protect you as the buyer and to protect lenders and ultimately to protect our economy. So what happened after the housing crash is the government put in a couple laws to make sure that uh, if you go for a home loan and you get approved for one, that you have a really high chance of paying that back and it's not going to be uh, a hardship to pay back that mortgage. So one of those laws is called ATR, it's the ability to repay, but basically it's saying that what you have on your loan application, uh, we need to make sure that with your income and your assets, your, your liabilities and your credit, you're able to afford a mortgage with a high chance of success. So not, not only laws like ATR, the ability to repay, but also uh, even laws that don't directly relate to finance, things like the Patriot Act uh, that was created after 9-11 have put in laws to look at money laundering. So that's why lenders ask for bank statements is to check for things like money laundering or any terrorist activity through bank funds. So we create all this together and it creates uh, you know a lot of requirements and documentation that can be required for a mortgage. So. Uh, let's walk through kind of what is like the uh, it's like the happy meal of mortgage documents, except it might not be as uh, as joyful. But if you are like most people and you're employed, uh, there's going to be a, a standard set of some documents that you'll most likely be asked for when you go through the mortgage application. So number one is some form of ID. So normally this is a driver license. Okay, after that, uh, again, if you're employed by a company, normally you'll be asked for uh, past two years of your 1040 tax returns. So this shows uh, your income along with any itemized deductions um, as along with your net income. So two years of your 1040s. Uh, also two years of your W-2s. Your W-2s are the document that your employer gives you at the end of a year, showing you how much you made, either in wages, commission, overtime, tips, anything like that, they'll break that down for you. So normally the past two years of W-2s, you might also receive a 1099 if you've done some self-employed work, all right? Um, so driver license, 1040 W-2s or 1099s, also 30 days of your pay stubs. Most people are paid bi-weekly, so normally this is two pay stubs, uh, giving us that full 30 years, and you can see how important income is. We're looking at income from a couple different angles to make sure that we follow those uh, ability to repay regulations. All right, uh, you'll also be asked for about two months of bank statements. The main thing that the underwriter is looking for in those bank statements is number one, they wanna see that you have uh, the funds to be able to close on a house. If it's going to take you $5,000 cash out of pocket to purchase a home, the underwriter wants to make sure that you have that money there and then when you close, you're not going to completely wipe out your bank account. 
because they don't want to create any hardship uh, with you purchasing a home. So they're making sure you have those funds. They're also making sure that no funds were borrowed because we can't borrow funds um, that are unsecured to purchase a house. Um, and they're also tracking for any large deposits to uh, make sure there's no money laundering um, or any sort of terrorist activity happening. I know it sounds a little extreme, but this is just part of uh, what the government has given us to, to use here. And, and ultimately, again, all of these are set up to protect you as the buyer and to protect our economy, um, to make sure that you can continue to get lower interest rates because not everyone else is defaulting because they've been vetted um, just as well. So how do we actually make this process a little bit easier? Since there are a lot of documents sometimes asked for, and these are just the, the standard documents that you'd be asked for. If you have uh, more unique scenarios, maybe uh, you pay or you receive child support or alimony, things like that would be documented. Um, if you've had a bankruptcy, you would need to send in your bankruptcy documents, uh, your foreclosure documents if you have those. Um, basically, anything that's pertaining to your income, your credit, liabilities, assets are going to be documented and put into the loan application to make sure that you can get approved for that loan. So the best way to streamline this process um, is, is number one, to be as upfront as possible with your uh, lender, whether you're working with a loan officer or a mortgage broker or a lender, um, whatever mortgage professional you're working with, you want to be honest with them because they're going to be the ones who are going to be your advocate. They're going to help you go through the process, right? They're not going to hear something and then turn you away. Um, they're going to help you find a creative solution, at least the good ones will. Um, so be honest and upfront. Also expect uh, to spend a bit of time collecting these documents up front. Any, anything you think that might be necessary, go ahead and collect that before you start an application. That will speed up the process a lot quicker. Um, what we do, we go through a three-step process uh, that we take all of our clients through. So step one, um, we do an application and we collect all of the documents up front. So the reason why I collect them all up front is so, so there's no surprises. Um, everyone knows what to expect, and then we can we can manage any problems or hurdles at this stage in the process before you have a contract and before there's all of the stress of moving. So step one, we go through the application, then we document everything. We get that all wrapped up together. Uh, step two, we review really clear loan options and compare different loans side by side so everyone can see their rates, their payments, and their total cash out of pocket. And then finally, we do a fully underwritten pre-approval, uh, which means Everything's done with the mortgage process except for things like the appraisal and the title, but you're ready to go. You know that you're going to close on a house. All the documents have been taken care of. Now you can go start shopping for a home. So it's apply and send in documents, review loan options, and shop for a house. So hopefully that gives you a really clear idea of what's going on in the mortgage process. Um, there can be a good amount of documents that are asked for and it's not the most fun to go and try to collect those. That's why you want to do that work up front. Um, but know what to expect. You know, if, if, a, if a lender is asking you for documentation, it's not because they're trying to make the process difficult. I hate asking for a lot of documents. I know that everyone else does as well. Um, but at the end of the day, we're all trying to accomplish the same goal. We're all trying to close on a house. So anything we can all do to make that process as easy as possible, we're going to shoot for. So if you have any questions or want to know some more information or start your pre-approval, uh, you can go to kylesegrapes.com. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. But thanks so much for watching this video. Be well.